get into this area of, of scripture memorization in prayer today. And so look at your sheet. And what we have here, uh, boys and girls, uh, is that we have scripture memorization review on one side. And then we have a little test on the other. We're not going to do that tonight. Okay. But we are going to work on these verses. And I may just do a little bit on this area of uh, Hebrews, uh, where our uh, first verse starts out saying, let us, let us. I, I'm looking for a spring. I'm looking for a spring. I have garden and flowers and, and lettuce and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but let us, L-E-T-U-S, is mentioned 13 times in Hebrews. Yeah. You know? yep. We'll look at a couple of those for closing. I'm very conscious of time, and I realize it's Sunday night. I thank every one of you for coming out today. It was not a good night to come out. This is a nice crowd for a Sunday night crowd on a blistery uh, Cleveland, January 30th. But anyway, uh, that, here's what we're going to do, okay, just to keep us awake here, and yeah, everybody's still alert and all that. I'm going to say this verse once by myself, and then we're going to say it again, okay, these verses here. And then I'll give you some associate, associate verses. As you see, <clears throat> I'm at the age where I have to alliterate, you know. I'm not alliterate, but I have to alliterate the same word, you know. Now, some people think I'm alliterate, but that's okay, you know. Uh, but we're going to, uh, we're going to, same, uh, same first letter, I should say. So I'm going to do this first one, uh, for instance, prayer scriptures review. I'm going to say this uh, Hebrews 4.16, and you and I will say it together. And as we get into the main scriptures here, we have a focus on some bolded out words. And we'll start to scream them out so we can start hearing them in our heart. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing and hearing, hearing by the word of God. God. So we retain things by hearing sometimes. And then, of course, uh, the idea of seeing. We're looking at this. We retain a lot by seeing. And then study, as we're going through tonight, study to show thyself approved unto God and workmen, and you need not to be ashamed. We want to divide the word of truth. And David, how often did he meditate the scriptures in Psalm 1? Day and night. Yeah. And then it says what? That thy word have I hid in my heart, that I may not sin against thee. Psalm 119 and 11. So we need to read, we need to study, we need to hear, we need to uh, 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 meditate, we need to memorize, we need to share the word of God with other people. So anyway, I'll do the uh, first year and then we'll do it together. And I'll give you some associate verses here. Father, we pray as we go through this. Give us a diligent heart, a teachable spirit. This is not going to take real long, but uh, it could be effective in our life to increase our prayer life uh, as Daniel did, even when under persecution. We may be under that situation. He prayed three times a day, but maybe we can start doing that as we give some ideas and thoughts about this. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Okay. I'll do this first one and we'll work together. First of all, I'll do it. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4 16. Let's say it together. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4 16. Now, uh, the first uh, section is courage. I think this is a day where we need courage. I don't know about you, but my flesh is not always very courageous. But the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the promises of God, knowing that He is with me, that He is in me, that He is for me, and greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. Amen. I can have courage to get the gospel out no matter what the circumstances are. Amen. So I'm going to give you Psalm 34. I'll see it first. But then I'm going to give you a few associated verses. You don't have to write out the whole verse, but I'll give you the first uh, uh, reference, and then you can look it up later. Don't sell yourself short. You can do this. Uh, okay. Uh, I would say, now I'll, 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 I'll shout out a bolded word. Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Let's say that together. Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Some associate verses that will help you is Psalm 46, 1. Write that down, this Psalm 46, 1 there. Yeah, some of you know it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 46, 1. When I go visiting, uh, one of the verses I pulled, and we were able to cover, I'll just sort of give you a report, 
uh, in January from West 73rd uh, down to West 25th on the south side of Denison, uh, north of Cleveland uh, Zoo and uh, uh, west of the Metro. So, hey, if it's still outside and it's, uh, the, 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 it, it, it's uh, uh, not uh, blowing so much, and the uh, uh, pavement's dry throughout there. Our pastor was out yesterday witnessing to people. We still, folks still need the Lord. Tell is a real place, and we still ought to do what we can. Whether we be in the drug mart or whether we be in the supermarket, I have a friend that uh, witnesses the people continually in these various uh, diameter, in these various areas of where we're at. But uh, uh, 2 Timothy 1.7, I'm going to give you two one seven. 2 Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. So when we go into a situation, that's a good verse to know. Another one, I have a friend that's going to have to go into court because he has a menacing neighbor in the Parma court. You know, the courts can kind of get a little twisted. Pray for Carol and Gil, their older couple. But I gave them Mayhem, AM 1 7. These little minor prophets, they have some good, good yeah. verses. Uh, God is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Yep. And he knows them that what? Trusted in him. Mayhem 1 7. He can give us courage. He can go down the side, I won't quote it. Uh, uh, Isaiah 41.10. Isaiah 41.10. Some of you know what I'm talking about here. We need courage. Amen? And God can give us that courage. We have the Spirit of God. We have the Word of God. We have the promises of God. We can pray into the world when we go out. Uh, we have our witness. We have the gospel, the blood of Christ, the resurrected Savior. We got a we got lot number seven one here. So let's go out there with the boldness and so forth. We have passion in the truth. They know that the, the truth can make you free. Okay, we need a clean heart when we go out there. We need a clean heart while we're in. You know, we need a clean heart anytime. And there's no way I can muster that up. I have this old flesh. Guess what? My flesh doesn't get any better. It gets worse, you know. And so we need uh, to have a clean heart. And that comes from the Lord. I'll say it once. Psalm 5110, create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Okay, let's say it together. Psalm 5110. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, here's a, the fourth verse that goes along with it, one of my favorite verses, 1 John 1.7. 1 John 1.7. There's a lot of contrast. I've heard Pastor Snackle, one of the greatest teachers in America today, and basically doing uh, contrast in 1 John. You, know, you have fellowship with the godly, you have fellowship with the ungodly, you need to have fellowship with the godly. And it says in, uh, that we need to walk in the light, not in the darkness. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ comes in us from 45% of our sin. No, all of our sin. Amen. All of our sin. And so that's a good verse to realize that, that blood, uh, you read in Hebrews 9 and 10, the importance of the blood of Christ. And so we need a clean heart, and he can give us a clean heart, he can give us courage. Uh-oh, he gives us a control of tongue. I don't I know probably one in this room had a problem with it. I know some people have had problems with their tongue before, you know. And so uh, we actually put a, a couple of lessons on the tongue uh, together. A couple of uh, 50 verses actually had. But I'll give you a couple. Okay, let's do this one here. This one here is good. I'll do the first Psalm 141.3. Set a watch. O oh Lord, before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. Okay, let's put it together. Psalm 141, 3. Set a watch, O oh Lord, before my mouth, keep the door of my lips. You're doing well. Some of you might know Psalms 1940. Okay, give it left. Remember how that goes? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. One of the key words in our life as Christians is acceptable. Not whether the president finds it acceptable. In my God in heaven. It says in Ephesians 4 or 5 times, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Talking about our tongue, our pastor wrote a wonderful Christian, wonderful man of God. I might have shared this with you before, some of you may have gotten back at it. But five areas that we talked about, my wife and I were talking about this tonight is take the acronym THINK, P-H-I-N-K, THINK before we speak. You know, if someone's trying to confront you, maybe just pray and 
and don't retaliate. We're ministers of reconciliation. We're ambassadors for Christ. So when we say something, the word uh, letter, letter P, think of, say things that are true. True. So I have to uh, first of all, say things that are true. Now, as far as the H, say things that are helpful. Helpful. You know, we want to help folks along, encourage folks. Things that are true, things that are helpful. I, things that are inspiring, inspiring. We want to inspire people. Hopefully we're doing a little bit of that tonight. To get into the scripture, you're already starting to digest some of this as we go along. And things that are needful, things that are needful. And that's important, you know. Don't say any more than you're supposed to say. James talks about that. Just yeah. stay, keep, it, keep, it where, keep it where it should be. Be a good listener. Be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to write. Uh, when you go into a, a meeting, uh, don't cut people off when they're talking. You know, let them finish what they're saying. You know, and uh, uh, when you go visit, uh, often I'll give an idea that I'm going to be leaving the house, but I'm not really leaving the house. They're getting like a ten-minute warning, you know, and they get to see that body language, and then I you know, step back, back, and I listen to them. Because then they have some burdens for prayer or whatever it is. We have a four by four ministry, which we try to visit 16 families a week, our team. And uh, we will get all kinds of contact, possibilities of witnessing, or witnessing to people all around. But to be a good listener. And then kind. What do you think? Uh, occasion, be kind. Show kindness to people. Gentleness, caring, courtesy. Uh, we're trying to teach over at Bedford. We were very excited about this particular lesson. I taught on prayer. Uh, on a prayer course. We put together 24 large uh, courses on prayer. Everything is free of charge. We want to reach the we want to reach the people around the world that are poor people. And when we went on Facebook a few years ago, I think we've added 30 new countries, 30 new countries wow. to our, our line is through Facebook. And we try to use it in a good way there. And uh, part of what we do on Facebook that is definitely to give people hope and courage and things like that. Okay, let's look at uh, it was mentioned today, Brother Jeff is very good. There's a good song running, a, 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 a song, a song leading, prayer, encouragement, and he used this verse here. This is a great one. Uh, let's look at uh, Jeremiah 33 3. Uh, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Let's go ahead and uh, say that together. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things. Which thou knowest not. You know, in the book of Acts, uh, it, 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 it convicts and inspires me that every chapter, the first five chapters, talks about being a witness. We you know, all need to be a witness for Christ. Right. And uh, basically, uh, they were under a lot of persecution. Uh, James and John, they saw that they were bold, giving out the witness for the Lord Jesus. You know what they did? They called on the Lord and asked the Lord to give them boldness. Let me share what it says. In Verse 29, you can write this down. Acts 4, 29 uh, through 31. Acts 4, 29 through 31. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that we may speak thy word, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they faked the word of God with fullness. Hey, that could happen to us as well. You know, I had Mr. Corley going out with me before he died uh, for about 25 years visiting with me. This man went out visiting, not going out until he was nine weeks or so. You know, and he was doing 100 push-ups a day, even at that age. He was a World War II Marine. I thought, I'm in the Navy. I got to do at least 200 push-ups. I'm going to let out a World War II Marine beat me out. But anyway, the call upon the Lord that when we need him. And then we look over here to commune early. Commune early with the Lord. Some of you already know this one. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's what we'll do. We'll just, you got it down now. Yeah, we don't have to do it twice. But it, what is your priority? You know, uh, I looked at Daniel, Daniel 6, this bring me through Daniel this week. His priority was having to commune with the Lord no matter what the situation, in season or not, even when it would be thrown to a den of lions, you know. And he didn't care what they thought. He's going to pray for his yeah. job. 
And so I thought, what can I do to incorporate that more in my own life in a personal way? Because uh, I get a little drifty, get a little out of it. So I decided I'm going to figure out three scheduled times a day that I'm going to pray. I always get up early in the morning. been doing that for 35 years, about 3.30, but I go back to bed again and spend time with the Lord about 3.30 in the morning. And then, uh, 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 then I have abortions with my wife. We do that Proverbs once a month, uh, once a day thing for a month. So we go through Proverbs and then Psalms and we have prayer together. I, uh, we, I love, I'm a research guy. And essentially there are 30 books, 30 books in the Bible that have six chapters or less. Most of them think 12 to 15, sometimes less than that. Minutes to read those books. So I read them in the evening and then I pray then at that time as well. And I'll tell you the truth, at my age or even earlier, I start I am more, more spiritually vulnerable as the day goes on, as it wears down. And so I need to have that extra boost from the Lord in the evening. I'm just throwing that out. Hopefully, hopefully that might be an encouragement to you. And then confidence, um, Matthew uh, 7 7. Okay, and let's do it together. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Why don't we just put verse 8 next to that one there? Verse 8, I'll give to you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and him that uh, uh, knoweth it shall be opened. You might also put, I like Philippians uh, 1 6, it's not a prayer verse. Being confident in this very thing, he which begun a good work, and he will perform it unto the day of Christ. I'm glad that he can help finish when, I'm, uh, when I start. We were talking about uh, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. It's not that I'm faithful in the time of trouble. You know, God is faithful to bring me through and bear the troubles that I may go through. You know, I'm not, I, I, we had a, a pastor wrote his father preaching. This is good to keep in mind as we go through this situation how much truth we have and all this I do not know. But no matter what, in this day and age, we can be faithful at least in five areas. Number one, we're talking about faithful in our Bible reading and Bible study. Faithful in prayer. Faithful in church attendance. Hey, I'm glad you're here good. today. There are some people that could have been here, but you, uh, they decided not to. It wasn't the priority. This was your priority to be here. And faithful in giving, whatever that might be, your, your gifts and giving. And faithful in our witness. You know? Good. And so Good. those five things we need to be faithful in to go along yeah. with our prayer life here. And then come. And we want to look at come. Uh, the word come or came is, is mentioned between Matthew and Acts over 400 times. So uh, you have interesting to do those kind of studies. So uh, let's do that together. Matthew 11:28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. The later on, he says, My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So basically, I'll give you one of the ones I like. I call it one of my eternal security verses. It is, if you put this down, John 6 and verse 37. All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise. Cast down. Isn't that a beautiful verse? And yeah. yeah, those verses there that we can take to heart. So we can come to the Lord at any time. He's available, you know. And so uh, we have the idea we can have courage, we can have a clean heart, a controlled tongue, we can call upon the Lord, hey, for salvation as well. You know, repentance comes when people acknowledge their sin. Sometimes we go through Romans Roll and other verses with people. And maybe they won't light up, but when they start realizing, yes, I've sinned against the Holy God, yeah. you know, and acknowledge that, you know, the idea of changing, your, changing their mind. And uh, it might not happen on the first verse, but as you go through that, sharing these verses about sin, you know, the wages of sin is death. But you know, you get in inner city, you've got to explain wages, sin, and death. Some of them never had wages, you know, so you have to explain that. I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but that is the truth of that. So just to go through these areas and being careful. I have phrases I use. And we we'll talk a couple, a couple of phrases here. But one of the phrases I use when I go door to door and pass out our tracks, it's an eight-page track. It shows the cross, it shows hell, and how you need to trust Christ. What I basically say as an introduction, and sometimes I go a little farther, but when you're out in the cold or whatever and people are walking down the street, I'll have a John and Romans on our Bible study of the salvation plan and a track. I say, Here's some information that shows you how you can go to heaven 
and having your sins forgiven by trusting Jesus as your Savior. Okay, so, and I'll go through that. Go to heaven and have my sins forgiven by trusting Jesus as my Savior. I mean, that's, it's not necessarily easy, but they all of a sudden are thinking, if there's a, they look it up and there's this hell down below, you know, and preaching both sides of it. Hell is mentioned over 53 times in life, in my name, you know, not to mention condemnation and so forth. To have a phrase that you can share with people that will catch their attention. A lot of folks are guilt-ridden for one thing or another, but I'm glad that, Lord, as far as east is from the west, my sins are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Cleansed by the blood of Christ. That's even a better, yeah. way, a better way of saying it. I'm not covered, but cleansed Amen. by the blood of Jesus Christ. So to, to know that, and as we go into this idea of uh, continuing in prayer, this is what we do most every day. I love Acts 2.42. And uh, we'll get into this right now. Let's say it together. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayer. I had many deal duties at Cleveland Baptist Church. One of them was I had a, a, a Wednesday night discipleship class. And uh, then we have in our own home, uh, being a uh, hospital, we have them to come over every other week at my house in the summertime every week. And I had to make chili, we broke bread, we had fellowship, we prayed, we got into the doctrine. And boy, that is something, you know, get a group of people together. And uh, we, not only for not, when it talks about not forsaking one another, that's not just in the church. Folks are isolated. We need each other. We need to commune with one another. Yeah. Either by phone or send cards out. They don't know if someone's missing here tonight, that usually comes. There might be other issues going on. You know, they say, we missed you tonight, you know. And uh, uh, there's a lot of folks that you're in this room that are isolated. They might be have people in their house, but they're unsafe people in their home, and therefore they're not getting that fellowship. So we need to encourage one another in that. So we look in this continue in prayer. Colossians 4 2, let's say this together. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Now, basically, <clears throat> this attitude of thanksgiving is mentioned in every chapter of Colossians. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, in 112, we're thankful for our inheritance. That's free. In uh, 2, 6, and 7, that we can be taught in the faith, as our pastor here does. Uh, and then we get into uh, areas in which we can give uh, thanks even when we sing unto the Lord. And uh, then I want to just share with you uh, six other things in our prayer life that we ought to pray for that start with T. This is an important thing. Getting down to closing here is... When we pray, that our thought life is like this. The first key is thought. How is our thought life? Philippians 4, it talks about things that are pure and just and lovely and good report. How is our thought life? What are we thinking about? Right. You know, uh, and that kind of thing. That's why it's good to have good music. You know, yeah. Not to compromise on the music. Not to right. compromise on the word. Not to comp compromise on standards. You know they have standards when you go to the jail. You know, you can't go in like a minister with the women or whatever it is, you've got to dress appropriately right. when you go visit at the jail. Yes. How much so, so should we, we dress appropriately when we come to worship the Lord Jesus Christ? Right. Right. Uh, so uh, basically, these ideas here, don't lower your standing. Don't lower the banner of the cross Amen. in our music, in our dress, uh, in our witness. Don't compromise the gospel. One thing I appreciated about Billy Graham, when I had, uh, had an opportunity to talk to Larry King, a scholar that just passed away, he gave him the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. Joel Osteen was interviewed, he did not give him the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so basically, the idea of where we go, tell them what God has done in your life, the hope that you have in your heart, 1 Peter 3.15. And then we look in, uh, this is something that if you say, I have trouble with scripture, Here's three scriptures, that are three verses uh, that we can learn very quickly in 1 Th uh, Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Let me just say about those two books. Mm -hmm. Every chapter of 1 and 2 Thessalonians talks about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. We actually have a course, a lesson course, most of us are a lesson, a large print about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in every chapter. And this will help us to do what to do uh, that, uh, that will help us. Let's say this together. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, 
In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. But those three verses, boy, I'll tell you what, that'll just refresh in your life right there. That could be a revival just from those three verses. And then we get into uh, casting our care. 1 Peter 5, 7. Let's say it together. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And uh, uh, basically, we worry about the situation with the government sometimes. But you know, it says in Proverbs 21, 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the That's Lord. Right. In the rivers of what will return it to the world. So basically the idea, we give the, we give the president over to the Lord. The Lord can do That's right. for this hard work. Uh, and Jonah, where was this king from after he heard eight words? This, uh, Jonah preached eight words. Mm -hmm. Eight words. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't the Kenneth Bird address. He just said, yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. You know. Uh, at, at that time, that was good preaching. That's all he had. It ain't worked. Amen. So it was the king of Nineveh. The answer was right there. But the king of Nineveh, and later on, this was, I mean, this is a brutal group of people. Yeah. And, uh, the, I mean, this is this is honeymoon compared to what these folks went through in the Bible, you know. Right. Matter of fact, uh, uh, the Russian mafia comes over here because when they get thrown into the slammer and the mafia in Russia, they go to Siberia and really suffer. They said, hey, if you go to jail here in America, it's a country though. We have racket ball, we, have, we get your baskets, play softball, we work out the weights, get strong enough to be different party when we get out. So basically, God knows what's going on. But you know what? We need to cast our care upon the Lord. I like to fish and I like to cast. I told my uh, uh, my grandson out to he would didn't much didn't do much fishing until after we went fishing in the sun. And I might have uh, mentioned this before. And the two sessions we went to this time, we caught 138 fish. Oh, wow. That kid became a fisherman. You know, he caught a, I had I, 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 him bring a 10 pound catfish, you know. I think yeah, it's not always like this. I mean, he's, a, he's about five or nine. And the fish is from here down to his foot, you know. And uh, basically, uh, uh, but when we're casting our care upon the Lord, we don't reel back in. We just cast it out there and leave it. You know. yeah. Now we don't we don't want to be in self pity or whatever. Just cast it out there like the old Browns quarterback. In the fourth quarter, they just want to get rid of the football. You know, they didn't want to get tackled. Just get rid of the football. Cast that ball anywhere. If they catch it, they catch it. They don't. You know, I want to get out of here with my life. And so to cast your care upon the Lord for He cares for you. And then mm, confessing our sins. Let's do that together. First John 1 9. If we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And you can put 2 Chronicles 7 14 to good. 2 Chronicles 7. For my people, which are called by my name, but shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And I'll hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. And I'm going to give you the four H's of Christianity uh, as we look at this last verse here. And we're done for today. You can look at it. I was going to do a little bit, uh, but I don't want to worry it down. In Hebrews uh, 4, 16. Uh, I'm going to give you the scriptures up at the top. You can look up for yourself. But I'll give you the points. And then we'll get this last verse in the time. We already gave you uh, Hebrews 4, 16. Uh, uh, that's come boldly to the throne of grace. We mentioned, we, we mentioned that verse already there. Uh, and then I'll write on down here, if you would, uh, Hebrews chapter uh, 10 and verse 24. Uh, Amen. Hebrews 10, 24. I'll go ahead and read it to you. I'll just read them to you. I won't preach them. I promise. 10, 24. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Oh, so uh, that's one of them there. So that's the practical side. We looked at Hebrews. These are some little alliterations. Hebrews 4, uh, 16 was the prayer side. Now let's look over here, the patient side. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 1. Hebrews 12 and 1. What we're seeing, when we have our uh, compass about the so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We need to be patient with all men. Don't take a whole lot of input from the world. 
whole lot of input from the news. You know? Right. Yeah. We need you know, we need to have our heart involved with the Spirit, the Word of God. Just take him a little bit. But don't I know for instance a little poison is what spoil the whole meal, you know. And uh, basically just take him a little, not too much to understand what's going on, but uh, the word of God is what we need. And then look over here as we close here in uh, sure that last verse, chapter thirteen, and we'll look at the idea of plot, you know. Jim Brainer uses that a lot. Yeah. That help you. And when he was in Siberia, he was, he's excited. We, we send money uh, to help uh, with his John and Romans, our ministry. And we uh, love that. Uh, but he, he talks about keep on plowing. And uh, verse number, we look at 13 and verse uh, 13. Let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. We need, we need a witness, not only in this church, we need a break huddle and get outside of this camp. Amen. Tell folks about the Lord Jesus Christ. Good. Amen. And not only plowing, not only patience, not only the practical part, not only praying, we need to praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Look at verse number 15. Number 15. It says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. All glory, all honor go to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Under us, okay. Uh, let us do this uh, last verse in the clear conscience at the bottom. Psalm 139 and 23 and 24. Let's say that together. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Okay, that's the, the four ages here. An honest approach. Sometimes we don't see the blind spots in our whole life. We talked about the town and the temperament, how we react to situations. So, so basically, the first age is honesty. And then humility. You might write down John 3.30 down below there. John the Baptist said, he must, Jesus, he must what? Increase. I must decrease. So we need, as four ages, we need to be honest. We need to be humble. We need to be holy. You know? Good. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, uh, Peter said, of all people, this, this wild fisherman, you know, where at one time he said, Lord, you talk to me. I'm a simple man. He said, be holy for I am holy. Yeah, we have the Holy Spirit. We have a holy Bible. We have a most holy faith. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We need to be a holy people. Good. So basically, be holy. Be humble and be honest. And we, we want to be, when we face the Lord, an honorable vessel. And so basically, uh, go ahead and I will share that verse here with you. It says here in verse number uh, 21 of uh, 2 Timothy in chapter 2. Uh, I'll start in 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some of honor and some of dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel of honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepare unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Father, what a what good way to end. We start out calling on the Lord, we end up calling on the Lord. We need a pure heart. And by the blood of Christ, we can have that, Lord. We can have courage as we seek the Lord and ask the Lord to give us courage. We can have a clean heart. You can create a, in us a clean heart, Lord. We can have a controlled tongue. And Father, help us with our tongue. Uh, even a fool is kind of wise when he holds this peace. We can call upon the Lord, and He can do great and mighty things in our life as we've done in this church. And we can commune early. Maybe we can spend an extra 20 minutes in the morning seeking your face, O oh Lord, in the morning when we seek thee, O oh God. And we have confidence that we can ask and receive the joy of making full in our own personal life, O oh Lord. And we can come with our burdens, and no matter how heavy laden, we can rest them with you, O oh God. And we can continue one, to one with another in fellowship and doctrine, breaking of bread and prayer. And we cast our care upon thee, O oh Lord, we can rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and every gift, everything give thanks. And we can confess our sins that so easily, uh, 
You know, even though we were saved one time, each day we need this time often to repent, uh, to have repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus, Amen. loving our fellow man, and loving our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our might, and all our strength. Father, I hope uh, as we have on the other side of this paper, this quiz, may folks take it to heart and may they realize that uh, they can do this. And if anyone that does do this, we're going to have a reward for them in three months if they memorize these scriptures. I believe many can. Over at Becker, I think we had 10 folks uh, memorizing all these scriptures. Mm -hmm. Lord, and I pray that it's a small church. It only runs about 30, so one third of the people did it. So we pray that some folks will take it to heart and we give them a certificate of completion. We'll give them actually a Dollar Tree gift card if they complete this. So as you gave us eternal life, may we be willing to give to others this wonderful word of God. May we apply it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.